Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Bobby Newland I'm Jason's older brother As you can hear I sound kind of similar But I've got a much croakier manly voice And I don't know why I said that. It's not. It's me. It's Jason. Hi. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't talk like that, do I? Uh, yeah. Welcome to JasonNewland dot com. Yeah, my voice does sound a bit croaky today. Yeah. But it's okay. I don't mind. And that's kind of the main thing, really. Um. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Number. I think it's a number 110. I think. I may be right. Oh, so I'm just sitting. Can't if you I'm sitting, I am sitting. Uh in my big black squeaky chair. Andre is asleep. It's fast asleep. In fact I've been out and I've come back and he hasn't come out at all to say hello. He's just In fact I don't know where he is. I got itchy thigh. Um, he might be in his bag. He might be on my bed. Uh, he could be in a variety of different places. He likes to. He basically likes to sleep around. Um. Oh yeah, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes, and only watch this if you're watching it on YouTube. When you can safely close your eyes, but of course you can watch it if it's on a different place as well, um, like Twitch or Facebook or you know wherever really. Um, but just make sure you can safely close your eyes, because safety comes before pleasure. That's what they said at school. Never really understood it. Um, what else? Oh yeah, please subscribe if you love what I do. If you just think it's absolutely glorious. You know, it's one of those things and you think, you know what? That Jason, that Jason Newley, in all these these sleepy things it, it's absolutely top notch then you know uh, please subscribe to YouTube and also you can if you want to support me uh, you can share the videos or you can take a step further and actually make a donation just go to my website the donation box is there it's a picture of a small child begging, holding a little bucket. That's not. It's uh, just a PayPal thing. Or if you can't be bothered to go there, you could just put paypal.com forward slash. I don't know what it is. That's terrible, isn't it? Is it just my name? Jason Newland. I think that is just paypal.me that's it it's not .com paypal.me me forward slash Jason Newland or just click on the, the link on my website uh, I realised if everybody who listens to my recordings to the podcasts was to donate a dollar or a pound 
or a yen I don't know what a yen is do yen still exist I know a lot of the currencies around the world have disappeared uh, like in Ireland the coke or poker the what did they what did they used to call the money there but it's gone now it's now euro and I do believe in Germany the money there was um, sausage not sausages um I don't know, I forget. But the I think the money in Germany is euros. Um I don't know if the yen is euros. I don't think so because uh China didn't become China didn't become part of Europe. And America and it's got dollars. But then you've got dollars in Canada and I think there's dollars in Australia. I think there's even dollars in South Africa. Unless they have yen. I suppose they could have. No, they don't have the euros in South Africa. Pretty sure they got dollars. But it would be a different type of dollar. Because like the Canadian dollar isn't the same as the United States dollar just the same as the United States dollar is different from the Canadian dollar but they're still spelt the same it's still dollar D O L L um A R dollar was it dollar O R E R dollar dollar See when I say it I say dollar which would be an A no R at all D O L L A dollar 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 r dollar r. so it makes sense in my head I think it's D O O <laughs> D O L L A R but for some reason that doesn't seem right it seems as if Perhaps the correct spelling would be D O L L E R. But I still have that little nag, little, little niggle in my brain saying, Are you sure, Uncle JJ, that it's not D O L L O R? And in a way, I think all three, is it three? D D O L L E R, that's one. D O L L A R, that's two. D O L L O R, that's three. Yeah, all three. Or four, if you include D O L L A. 
Now, for some reason, dollar with the D-O-L-L-A seems to make more sense to me. But I might be thinking of rap videos or like a rap song. Um, because dollar, the the word dollar is used quite often. But then, as I think back to the Bionic Man back in the you know early eighties, whence I used to watch it, well or late seventies as well. And see, I don't remember. It was a six million dollar man. Six million dollar man, but also the Bionic Man. So I'm not sure what the title was, whether it's the same both of those titles, or whether it just changed from one to the other. But we used to call him the Bionic Man because the six million dollar man just it was a mouthful, and it was a bit too. It felt a little bit like walking around with a receipt. You know, what are you watching tonight? Oh, let me have a look at my receipt. Oh, it's $6 million. Oh, yeah, $6 million man. Cost him $6 million, you know, to have his legs and arms and his eye replaced. Yeah, but aren't you getting caught up a little bit too much on the, the cost of the medical procedures? And I kind of agreed with that. So I elected to go with the bionic man but I'm not sure if that was the correct term I mean it was one of the titles of the show but I don't remember which one I'm guessing and I'm I'm making this up it might surprise you I sometimes do that is that the first season or series was the six million dollar man and then later on because it went on for quite a few years I do believe they just shortened it to uh, the bionic man although it's not really shortened is it if if it's a completely different title it's just changed the title not shorten the title even if the title is shorter than the original title but it's a different title you know if it was a six million dollar man and they changed it to six million man then it's shortened isn't it But to call him the Bionic Man, the only difference, I suppose, well, there's a similarity to the man. It's the man bit. So maybe they classed it as they shortened it down to man and then added some. So instead of being a $6 million man, they took away the, and uh, took away six, they took away million, and took away dollar. So we're just left with man. But then they realise that, you know what, who's going to know what it is? You can't name a television programme man. No one's going to know what it, what it means. So they got thinking. This is, this is my ass- assumption. I don't know. I wasn't there. I was just a child. I was... Uh, I was still trying to figure out the difference between sand and mud. And I guess they just thought, oh, we'll just add a little bit extra to the word man. Maybe they got together. Because I'm sure that in those situations, they probably get a bunch of creative people together in a room to kind of thrash it out, you know, to just, to rub off, rub off each other. (laughs) And, to see what, what they could, 
what could make them come, you know, up with something useful that was used, you know, they could use instead of just the word man to see what uh, between them they could produce. And um, I imagine they produced quite a lot amongst them, if that depends how much there were. But uh, there was like five or six, they probably produced quite a lot of ideas. But then the bionic man, because it was, he was bionic. That was the thing. Because I imagine there would be one person, because you know, there's, there's, they're sitting around and they've all got the receipts in their wallets right? six, six million dollar man cost six million. Oh, you carry around a receipt as well yeah I do yeah well, I'd like people to know that I work on the show oh excellent but I reckon someone said you know what we've been making this show it's very popular you know it's the most pretty much one of the most popular shows in the television watching world and I imagine the other people thinking well yeah it is and haven't we haven't we done well let's pat each other on the backs and someone might have said no wait not yet not yet what is it about him that really stands out and one of them might say well it's, it's Lee Majors isn't it he's, he's a handsome devil and no one can deny that that's true he, he yeah, was very handsome still is I'm sure very handsome 90 year old now I said okay but what else what about his little squinty eye? You know, he used to always had that one eye that he had half closed. Yeah. But that, he had that anyway before he took the role. Yeah, but we we included that into the role so that he had, because originally he didn't have a, a bionic eye. He just, you know, but because he had his eye, one eye kind of heart, nearly closed. I don't know how he got a driving license, but he had one eye nearly closed. We thought, it looks like he's focusing on something far away in the distance. And so they thought, ah, oh, so let's give him a bionic eye. And then someone said, wait a minute. You said the word bionic. And that bloke said, yeah, I also said I. You're very quick today. He said, don't, don't be rude. We've had this discussion. I want to take it back to HR. I said, okay, I'm sorry, boss. Bionic, that's the word. Bionic man. What about man bionic? What? What about man bionic? What, why wouldn't it make more sense to call in the bionic? The Bionic Man. You know what? When I heard Bionic Man, I thought, that's good. But there was something missing. The. What about Anne? What? What about Anne? Bionic Man. Or Anne Man Bionic. Are you alright today, Cyril? You're acting very strange. Oh, I'm okay. Just a bit drunk. Mm. So that's what we go with. 
the bionic man it's much catchier than the six million dollar man that's just that's just that's the title that goes on forever the bionic man it's catchy so we call it that from now on everyone already loves the show everyone you know they don't when they see an action fighting a big grizzly bear they're not thinking that cost six million pound that did for him to be able to do that no they're thinking he's bionic look how strong he is he's fighting that grizzly bear looks nothing like uh, a man in a costume it doesn't it's it's look oh look when he runs he runs in slow motion which is a bit weird so when he's running fast I wonder who came up with that idea we got an idea what's that when the bionic man because we don't really have the technology at the moment Star Wars hasn't well Star Wars was invented but you know we don't have the te- technology for television yet you know for the special effects so how about whenever the bionic man nearly said the six million dollar man then so whenever the bionic man runs fast you you see him move in slow motion okay well what would be the point of that well if he really did run as fast as we're saying he does then we wouldn't be able to see him would we it would be very difficult to catch up and all part of the acting process is seeing the emotions on his face and he won't be able to see that if he's running like really really fast I said oh okay that makes sense I suppose but when people think that he's just moving really slowly how will they know that he's moving really fast or how will they know that when you could have the same thing if he jumps off a bridge or he jumps jumps high couldn't you because that would be really fast as well I suppose but how would you know it's moving fast how about we have a sound effect what kind of thing what do you mean like weep or whoop? no no what about this wow that's amazing and that is that is phenomenal see thought it would be so if he's crushing an orange or he's jumping or he's moving really fast you can just hear him go but it sounded a bit better than that because that's just me you know I can't be around for every single uh, scene and every episode just to go do the you might need to get you know special effects to work on that but you get the idea well yeah I quite like it if you just did it if I, I just said I can't be at every episode I've got I've got other things other commitments as well you know we've got to write the script we've got to, we've got to work on all kinds of like characters and um, you know there's a lot involved in this isn't it you know that yeah but I think you should do the sound though yeah but I can't be at every scene where the bionic man nearly said six million dollar man again then when the bionic man 
uses his bionic powers. You know what? I quite like the idea when you said that. The bionic powers. Why don't we call him the bionic powerful man? Or the bionically powerful man? Or the bionic man that's got power? What about the six million dollar man that has bionic powers? What would be the point in that? Well, it would be a good description, very thorough and to the point. And it doesn't leave any scope for misinterpretation. It's just a television show. Yeah, I know. But is it? Yes, it is, really. It's just a television show. Ah. However. No, no have, however's necessary. It is a television show called, well now it's called The Bionic Man. Okay, fair enough. So we'll get the soundtrack sorted so it goes dee 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 whenever he moves and I don't know what else could we do. So we've got his eye, he's got his hands, he's got his legs tell you what would be good what how about are you ready for this yeah how about are you all ready for your minds to just be expanded beyond uh, you know imagination yeah go on how about we build a doll to sell to the kids then call it you ready the bionic man okay how would we build a doll what what how well that's the good thing you see all we have to do is copy the action man absolutely duplicate the action man completely including the fuzzy hair on the top including the whole body exactly the same and a good thing is because my son he has an action man and it's called Eagle Eye because he can actually change the he's got a thing on the back of the head where he can make the eyes move wow so we could use that technology for the Bionic Man stole ah And something's even better, what I was thinking, is because we can have lots of different costumes for him. You know the way that Wonder Woman has all the different costumes for her, like the flippers and, you know, the swimming costume, that doll, and, um, what is it, the one where she flies in the plane, the invisible plane? It's... Uh, I actually, I bought one for my daughter. I, I haven't told you this story. I bought a kit for my daughter. And it was in the, it was basically, it was faulty. All right. And it didn't have all the bits. So I gave it to my daughter for Christmas. And it was the, uh, the plane, you know, the, and she said, uh, 
so I had all the stuff, all the kit for her to wear. And she said, Dad, it's, it's bits missing. I said, what? She said, well, there's no plane. I said, yes, there is. She said, no, there isn't. I said, yeah, it's there. Where? I said, it's invisible. And uh, she wasn't happy. So what we could add to this, because, you know, we can have all these costumes and... Because a good thing about the Bionic Man is he's been in so many different situations. He's scuba dived, he's uh, mountaineered. You can have lots of different costumes for him. But a special thing you can have is we can have super grip hands, which Action Man already has. And here's a special thing which I just thought. Have like a, a little magnifying glass that goes through its head. So that you can actually, or maybe through one of the eyes, so you can see further into the distance. It's like a little, like a tiny little telescope. But that'll cost a fortune. Telescopes co cost millions of pounds. It's not going to be a real telescope. You're not going to spend millions of pounds on each doll, are we? I know it's called the six million dollar man, but not a six million dollar toy or doll. Just a little bit of magnification so that the one eye is stronger than the other, which is how it is in the show. Because uh, he's got a bionic eye, but I don't think he can see into space. How do you know he can't see into space? Well, I don't know he can't see into space. I'm saying he might. I'm guessing he wouldn't need that kind of technology to see into space. Because why? Would you need it? What possible reason would you need to be able to see galaxies, other galaxies, just in your you know, normal day-to-day -day life? I mean, if you was a, an astrology or astronomist or space cadet or I don't know, yeah, you might need it. But even then, you probably wouldn't want it in your eye, would you? As you're walking around with the Hubble telescope in your head the whole time you'd get no rest would you you'd have to keep your eyes closed most of the time because they'd just be distorted you know you're eating your dinner one eye's looking at the fish fingers and the other eye's looking at the table and it can see all the different atoms living on the tabletop. All the little tribes and the little cities <laughs> of germs all living together in harmony. Wouldn't that be a telescope, though? Would that no microscope, not telescope? Yeah, a microscope is a telescope, isn't it? It's something that's magnified. It's just they're aimed at different things. A telescope is aimed upwards. A microscope is aimed downwards. Towards a thing that it's aimed at. Oh, yeah, well, I suppose so. So, we do this doll. Yeah, we'll do the doll, and it'll be really good. And uh, we'll be able to make money from it. Well, we won't be able to make money, will we? It's 
we just get a, a set salary. Yeah, but we'll be able to, you know, the company will make money. Okay, fair enough. That's what I think might have happened to that television show. I used to quite like some of the shows when I was a kid. One of my favourite shows, I mean, The Incredible Hulk was one of my favourite shows, but one of my personal favourites that I didn't share with anybody else. By that, I don't mean it was made specifically for me, but I watched it, and no one else in my family watched it. I watched it was on five o'clock or something in the afternoon, and it's called Mr. Merlin, and it was great. It was basically this. I think was it a mechanic? Was he a mechanic? But it was it was Merlin, like you know the original um, Merlin from King Arthur's days. But he just happened to be living in the eighties, nineteen eighties, and there is this young lad called Zachary or Zach that started going around, and um, Merlin started to train him up. And Merlin had an owl, a big white owl. And there was a staircase that used to go up. I think he went up or went down. I think he went up. And it led to this big place where there was a magical place or whatever. But it was quite cool. (laughs) I'm not really describing it very well, to be fair. But uh, I just liked it. It was something magical. I don't know. It's a pun. But it, was, it was a magical show. And I think Zach had a girlfriend or a female that he also used to come along as well and participate in various adventures that may have also included time travel I think I think so I don't know what other shows I used to like a show called Alice and this is an American show and it, again it used to be on 4.30 5 o'clock and I was probably about 8 yeah 9 I was probably about 11 possibly 10 or 11 when this was on and I don't know if it was even still on in America when I was being shown in England because at the time it was on every single evening or every afternoon I think probably either BBC 2 or Channel 4 and it was on you know like five five days a week so uh, and it was on for ages they showed it for a long time I loved it because there was Alice who worked in a diner then there was Alf or Al that worked in the kitchen and he was like a little bloke with a bald head who liked to shout a lot and then there was the one of the waitresses I forget her name but she was very loud and I think quite rude to the customers and then there'd be like regular customers that'd come in um, I think Alice had a kid pretty sure uh, so yeah and that's basically it was all just based around the diner where they all worked and the various adventures they had within the diner and some stuff that happened outside as well but it was 
I don't know why I liked it. I think I just... I got a thing for American TV shows. I think that's what it must be. I just like... I prefer American TV shows to English ones quite a lot of the time. Just... I don't know what it is. I'm a... I think I'm semi-American. I'm a semi. I have a... I don't have a semi. I have... I have a flat that I live in. It's... Can flats be semi? You can't have a detached flat, can you? Because... If it's detached, you've still got upstairs or downstairs connected. So you can never be... Oh, semi. That could be, I suppose, a semi. You can never have a detached flat. Oh, I had weird dreams last night. I kept dreaming about women. Seriously, just really, I don't know, maybe I need to get a girlfriend or something. But I was just dreaming about various different uh, females from the past and women that I've really liked but not done anything about, not, you know, let them know how I felt. And... Yeah. It's a bit strange, really. Then I woke up, went back to bed, and had even more dreams. Woke up again, then went back to bed, and again had more dreams. It was like, where are these coming from? I wonder why I'm thinking about stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe it is time for me to settle down and get married. I'm trying to think who I'm... Do you know when you're younger and you make a promise? Not a promise, but like a... I don't know what the right word is, but you know, you say to someone, okay, if you're not married and I'm not married by the time we get to 50, we'll marry each other. And you both say yes, but neither of you mean it. And both of you hope that it never happens. (laughs) Just like, please, that's ugh. Well, I think I've done that with a few people. And I will be 50 in, well, next year, next August, not this August, but the next August afterwards. So I have to get to 49 first, and then there'll be a year, and then I'll be 50. And, but I've still got, how long have I got till I'm 49? It's March the, I don't know what day it is, it's the 9th today, 10th, so March, April, May, June, July, August, so what, five months until I am uh, t- t- 49, I can't believe it, even 29 seems a bit old. For me, I mean, it just doesn't... Uh, 29. 39 seems maybe... Okay. 39. But 49. I don't... I don't feel it. I don't even feel it physically. You know, I'm not... I'm not quite the acrobat I once was. If I'm honest. 
you know there's certain things that I used to do that I don't now uh, there was a time when if there was a railing up you know to divide the pavement from the road or the sidewalk from the road I would just jump over the railing now I will walk 10 miles if I have to to walk around the railing I'm, I can't, I'm not jumping over anything I just don't see the point in taking the risk Things like running for a bus. I don't think I've ever met a bus important enough to run for for quite a long time. I think in some ways this is better to be late than to run. Sometimes depends upon what you're doing I suppose doesn't it so I guess if you if you need to be somewhere because when I moved here four years ago well it's nearly four years ago it'll be four years in April which is next month um, I think I came actually I visited or viewed the property the Tuesday after Easter four years ago and when I moved here the buses were every 20 minutes so that meant that they were three times an hour which wasn't too bad really you know whatever time you got there there was never a long wait for the next one and then last year they changed the bus timetable so that it's every half an hour on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays however on Sundays it's every two hours which is I don't know if you agree but slightly weird every two hours and the bus doesn't come through the estate it goes round so you can't even go to the normal bus stop I remember once I went up there went to the bus stop that I had to wait at and there was a couple of people waiting and I thought ooh um, I must be in time for a bus must be about to come 
and we were waiting there for half an hour. They were looking at their watches, making a phone call, and eventually a car pulls up, and they get in, they drive off. And I'm there on my own. Waiting for the bus, waiting, waiting. Got to 40 minutes, nothing. 45 minutes, no sign of the bus. 50 minutes. No sign of the bus. Over an hour. In the end, I just gave up and came home. You may say, well, yeah, but you didn't wait for two hours. I probably waited for about an hour and a half. Yeah, that's why I don't really travel on Sundays. Unless I'm just going to the garage and I might go there and I'll walk to the garage because I don't need to get the bus because it's not far from here. I mean, it's not next door, which I'm quite glad of in some ways because the traffic would be atrocious. But it's it, it's far enough away for it to be a little journey. And I used to go, well, when I do go, I take Andre with me. And he's in his bag. They like me to have him in a bag because uh, for whatever reason. He just likes to get out and to walk. He loves walking. It's his absolute favorite thing in the world other than to bite my toes when I just go out of the bath. Now he loves that. Oh yes. Oh yes, oh yes. So that brings me nearly to the end of yet another wonderfully action-packed um, let me bore you sleep mm. so take care of yourselves and I will see 
you next time.